Folks, this is Brian <coughs> with my RQG campaign diary. Um, played last night. Uh, we had some some tech issues with one of the players early on with Discord, but we got that figured out, and we think that it'll be good from now on out. Um, and there was a, a lot of discourse and discussion about you know where we were, what's been going on, you know, catching everybody up, kind of thing. Um, but then they start getting to, okay, we're here at this underground temple thing. We've been prepping for eight melee rounds, you know, we're playing. And so I started my recording at that point, I believe in the live place in the, in the description. And I have been thinking about the fact that spirit magic lasts for 10 melee rounds. They just spent eight melee rounds casting strength spells and stuff on each other. So those strength spells should have been dropping every melee round after the first two. But I really thought that uh, the encounter that was set up was really going to test them. And... So I wasn't really worried about it. Okay, yeah, an extra damage bonus. I didn't really do that much to what's been going on. Ooh, my goodness, excuse me. Um, but they actually went through the whole thing, you know, in you know just over two hours. So, you know, the other spells casted. Arrestra's going to try and pull the curtain down on her side. Subutai's behind her with his bow out. He's looking for his first target he can get and nail away at it. Um, Ingrilar's also set up uh, to take advantage of, you know, scanning the area. The new um is going to grab the other side of the curtain, pull it back, do his survey and take action. Um, and then uh, David is back there. He seems falling suit. You know, he's behind um, the Humakti and his survey the area, what's going on, that kind of thing. So, Restra pulls the curtain down, rolled really well. Although, with, you know, that strength spell on her, yeah, she nearly half of it down. The Mahti steps forward. Um, there is in the far end of this room they're in a uh, raised the dais. And on top of it is this giant python. And in the corner next to it is a guy in armor with a composite bow. Strike rank two, both he and Supatai fire. Um, I, I did look up, and in the rules, technically the only time you have a tie is when both combatants have a strength attack of the same strike rank and have the same dexterity. So the higher dexterity technically goes first. But I have not been doing that with the players. It's always been if you if you're both attacking on the same strike rank, I let the roll the players roll first, but we let them both roll. Um, I'll discuss that with the group later, see if they want to get more more uh, tight on that or not. But Subutai rolls and impale. I guess the guy in the chest. Um, does enough damage to bring the zero hit points in his chest. Down he goes. And I have to set up because he was going to be firing that bow twice around and um, he's got Oh, he's got a fetch. He, he's a he's a he's a he's shaman priest is what he is. Um, he got fetch, and the fetch is going to be firing speed dart on every arrow. <laughs> so he's pulling the arrow out. Speed dart gets cast on for him, and it was going to be great. Now, because he's a shaman priest, his combat skills are really low. So he had like, oh. What was this, like 20% with this composite bow? 
So it came really close to like, you know, 15 plus 20 is 35 kind of thing, right? So his, his, his combat skills are really low. Um, and because they've got spirits, they've been watching what's been going on in the, in the, the, the sunken fortress. And so they know the players are there. They know where the players are. They know what the players have been doing. And so you know, they spent rounds prepping themselves up too. Um, so the guy had a uh, parry spell cast on him. So after he got done firing his bow a few times and players are close enough, he's going to switch to spear, maybe sword and shield, spear and shield. But he had, my goodness, excuse me, parry spell cast on his shield so that his, his parry skill was in, you know, the reasonable range as well. Not really good, but, you know, reasonable at that point. So, uh, that was the plan. The Python, uh, I have been thinking back and forth about, you know, is it going to enthrall or is this going to bite? And, and, you know, this kind of stuff going on as well. And, um, once I got into the rush of melee, if you will, I just had him, him bite. I mean, this thing is huge. It's got this massive damage bonus as well. So, um, as soon as the Shaman Priest goes down, the Python beelines for Subutai. And the way I, I, I treat it like a dragon, a 4X dragon, right? So it's in these hex rules I got from Fancy Trip, and some of them actually my own. For example, uh, for a hex dragon has a two hex strike range. Yeah, and then has a two hex tail um, slash that it can do in addition to, you know, its normal attacks. And so, got this python, it's rolling up, it's four hexes big, and <laughs> it's biting down super tight. And throughout the combat, it got him like three different times. Uh, but he parried every single one of those. Um, and so a lot of damage got sucked up into that. But by the end of those three bites, he was down to one hit point. Now, I've got my own house rule because the RPG book says when you're down to one or two hit points, you're unconscious. Well, be solid on something, right? It's either you know one hit point or two hit points or maybe your healing rate and hit points or... But I just do zero. You hit zero, you go unconscious, and then you go negative your healing rate as some kind of like uh, coma, coma area kind of thing. And so, that's how I do it. So he's down to one hit point. He's still he's still moving around, but he he backed up at that point. Um, after that third bite, he got out of there and started doing healing spells on himself. So. Meanwhile, Superdizer hacking at it. Um, it has. Uh, Shimmer 3 on it. So did the other guy, by the way. Both of them had Shimmer 3 up. Um, and he, he's able to do some damage to it, but this thing's a beast. It's huge. It's got these massive scales on it, so it wasn't taking a lot of damage. Um, Davin... Okay, David and Arrestor are both possessed by passion spirits or, you know, love the mistress, you know, whatever this, this spirit deity down here, right? Um, which I had initially interpreted as standard passion, 60%, but I was reading through the bestiary the other day and I saw, no, passions are in fact fanatically passionate. Your passion is at 100%. <clears throat> so they're engaging with other entities that are tied together with this love passion and so they've got to make you know passion roles if they want to actually attack these things um and so david's going through his spell list on things that he can do to help counteract that um it wasn't solo logical man but that's mind but that's the one spell that he cast that i, I keep remembering but it was, you know, another mind type spell that allows you to 
to um, it's actually it keeps you from making passion rolls if I remember right, you know, that kind of thing. So he's trying to cast that. He's yelling at the serpent. Um, Stop! What are you doing? What are you doing? Kind of thing. And Arestra goes into the dais to look around, and see what's going on, see what else she can see because she can't really attack these things either. And the uh, Mokti makes a beeline for the bowman. Um, and he's hacking down the bowman, but the bowman's fetch is casting healing on into every round. So the next round is now plus two in the chest. It, he can get up and start doing things, but he's got a shield. Like, first round, he scrambles for a shield and a spear. And, you know, he's trying to defend himself. And he keeps making his stupid parry rolls. Uh, against against the Humak who's wailing on him, but he doesn't from Arrestra. Arrestra's up on the, on the day as ne- she moves over next to him, there the two of them are wailing on this guy. Um every time he get, he got hit in the leg, it dropped him down. Um and you know the human spirit healed his leg. Not enough to get him up though. But there's like he took one, two, three wounds if I remember right. Um and so it was able to heal him two on it. One, two, three. I mean, it's four wounds that it got four times. Um, but there was like three rounds where he's going back and forth, below zero, above zero, below zero, above zero. <laughs> um, and at, at the end, he ended up at, ended up at negative five. He's going to raise three, so he's dead. Once he's dead, the fetch is released. Um, the the, the Hamakti shaman's fetch is released. And so... He gets his fetch. Um, and at that point, the python turns, looks it across the room, um, and attacks uh, Hamakti. And I was thinking, and maybe this thing would do the, the crush, you know, spin around him and start crushing him kind of thing. Do the in, in, the uh, enthrall and, and swarm on him kind of deal. Uh, but I didn't have to go, just go and bite. And bit him a couple of times during that combat, if I remember right. But he, he made his parries, and so nearly all the damage was sucked up. He only took a, like a point or two of damage when he did get bit. And uh, after that, Angrilar books it across the, the thing as well and, and strikes and got a critical hit on on this, the giant python, which at that point... I was thinking he got a slash and not a critical. This is where some confusion came on, and, and the player, rightfully so, would have been a, was was upset. Well, hey, how come I didn't get this bypass armor thing on a critical? Well, what's the difference between a critical and a slash kind of thing? Um, he did enough damage to bring the beast really low in its hit points at that point. Um, but also because the slash, you've got a constitution roll to make, right? And he took, did 11 points of damage. And things got a constitution of 14. 3 times 5 is 15. So the thing had a 15% chance of staying conscious. Otherwise incapacitated. And it missed that roll. So it goes down. And now I think about it. Yeah, he did 11 points of damage. That all bypassed his armor. So I did treat it as a crit initially as well. Because the thing had like 8 points of armor. <laughs> Something I missed though. Uh, earlier, Subutai, after he got bit once or twice and, and jumped out of the range of this thing, um, tried casting. I didn't try. He actually cast it. <clears throat> Control Beast. And, well, yes, this thing is a giant python. It is also, in fact, the whiter of this temple. And uh, it says an animal. And, and technically, you know, whiter is a spirit. It just happens to be inside the body of an animal. Um, so I had him make his roll, and he actually made the power versus power thing. This thing actually had a lot of power, too. 
but it, it's not an animal. So successful in his draw beast is able to get to the mind of the python. See, this is not a regular animal. And then some more fighting goes on. That's when we get to the point where Angular does the critical hit on it. Or, yeah, the critical hit, the flash effect puts it under. And so uh, they're doing some discussion, and, and Subutai wants to do his draw beast um, skill on it because he needs to get that up for his hunter cult. And I'm going, you know, this thing's a conscious. You start cutting into it. It's going, and I look it up the unconscious until woken. If you get cut, you're going to wake up because of the pain. Uh, and I started to have that happen and go, and then I we went through that part, that part. Okay, he starts to cut, the beast comes alive, starts whacking around. Um, and then I said, no, 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 no. Subutai would have known that this thing is simply unconscious. You need to kill it first. Otherwise, when you start doing your, you know, flaying um, butchery skill, that um, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wake up. And so, okay, we do a little retcon there. Slash his throat, starts doing the uh, the peaceful cut. Well, two million rounds after this thing gets killed, this another gigantic serpent thing comes busting through the back wall, screams out "No!" and casts um, some rune magic. You know, the cavern's filled with darkness. Oh, I forgot that the uh, the fetch. When it wasn't actually healing the guy, we was starting to do extinguish spells on the light in here. Because <clears throat> everybody here technically has access to second sight. <laughs> so if they put the lights out, they can still fight, but the other guys can't. Well, the Maki did. But. And so uh, David at one point you know, pulls out his, 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 his uh, flint and tinder and, and pulls out a torch. And goes, so we start we talk, a little bit of talking about, okay, how long does it take to get stuff out of your pack? Where's your pack? Did you drop your pack before you started fighting? Technically, that's what happens, right? If you've got stuff in your pack, you drop your pack when you engage in combat. So it would have been back in the other room. But, you know, okay, maybe he doesn't have a lot of stuff. Because encumbrance counts for things, right? So, five melee, five strike ranks, right, to ready something. And that's going to be something that's on your belt, not in your backpack, but, okay. Five minutes rounds, get your stuff, get the, the tender, flint and tender out, five strike ranks to get the, the thing out, and then you start striking. Have you ever tried to start a fire striking? It is not easy or quick. Um, but I had them had them just do, I let them do it twice around, one stroke rank five, one stroke rank ten, you know, make your power roll. I should have had him do a power times three. I didn't do a power times five, but he fumbled the first time. <laughs> so he broke his flint. I let him do the rest of them at power times three, which at that point probably should be power times one. But uh, I've got some rules for how long it takes to get, you know, torch lit or how long torches last. Like I think in my fancy trip rules. So my floor's almost finished, but we ran into some issues. So the, the contractor's coming in on Monday to look at how, what was done and we're going to discuss okay, this was not exactly what we wanted. But when they showed us the stuff, it was too late to have them. <laughs> yeah, it was before we could, it was after we could have done some corrections. And this stuff doesn't match that stuff at all, which doesn't match this other thing. And they're supposed to be similar. So, yeah. So my stuff is still boxed up upstairs. I digress. So, that little thing's been going on while this combat stuff's been happening as well. Um, so, this other giant serpent beast comes barreling through the wall. It's actually a secret door, but you know, it, it busted through. Scream, now in this female voice, and cast some kind of uh, room magic that flashed darkness throughout the cabin. It failed on it and on casting that rune spell. And so the next melee round, it casts another rune splash it cast create zombie on the dead giant python. Um, Angular and the Hamakdi turn on it, a restrict ant. Um, and they start fighting it. Ew. 
I don't think it even got a real attack off. Um, it was going to be cast in, the plan was for it to be cast in spells. I think it was on that first, first round I was actually able to do something that, uh, again, I think it was Angular hit it and did damage to it. And one of the things that I do for my game is I've taken uh, Pendragon's traits mechanic uh, for my NPC so I can see with words I understand <laughs> instead of runes which are simulating the similar sorts of things, you know, this person's personality. And, and this thing was cowardly. It had a cowardly of 15. Um, and so I kind of ruled, okay, as soon as it takes some real damage, it's going to book. And it did. Somebody did like uh, 14 points of damage to it, I think. And it had eight point scales as well, if I remember right. Um, so that's, that's six points of damage to his tail. That's nearly all of his hit points in his tail. It discorporates. It's a spirit that can manifest. So it goes to the spirit plane and takes off. Um, Damon is still afraid that it's just like went invisible kind of thing. And screams, it's still there, is it still there? And then Mahdi engages his second sight and always gone. Meanwhile, we have a giant python zombie. <laughs> um, that because it's a giant python zombie, probably should have been crushing a PC every round. Because it was doing like... 7d6 worth of crushing damage when it does this little crush thing. Now, admittedly, its dexterity was low, so its chance of actually doing those things was low, but I just had it biting because, shoot, 5d6 bites. <clears throat> it's still significant. I think it was even more than that. It was 7d6 bites and 8d6 crushes. Anyway. Thankfully, though, it kept missing until... They were able they hit it in the head a number of times, but that's not what put it out. Eventually they got it down to negative hit points. And so it went it collapsed dead again. Um and it's kind of interesting from my perspective that one of the players was was making comments from time to time about you want to skin? We killed the same way you bring it back, you know, that kind of thing. Like I was doing this on purpose just to torment the, the party when in fact Here's the scenario. You guys came into a temple and you attacked a priest and his wider. <laughs> and it's a spirit cult and the spirit is there too, right? She just was a ways away. Took her too many rounds to get here, right? Uh, so the party's all alive. Supatai is, you know, got seven hit points. I don't think anybody else was really damaged that much, honestly, during this fight, because it was fighting, it was focusing on Supathai all the time. <clears throat> but I could be wrong from the, uh, the zombie giant python. It may have, may have hit somebody, but I remember it, it, the scores were really low, so I don't think it did work very well that way. And that's where we ended the session. So, party discuss among themselves is, you know, we need to search out the rest of this area now and just find out what's been going on. <clears throat> but in two weeks, I'm going to be at my nephew's wedding, so I probably will not be able, I know, I will not be able to play or to run because I will be playing because we'll have all of my high school buddies together to, uh, to do some playing. So, we're going to. We're going to do a bro con and play some more. Oh, fun times. Happy gaming.